Eddie family, yes, we have just concluded the month of Jubilant July. Yes, indeed, where we focus on the cell theory. How is it that we can utilize it for students to make them successful and how as educators we can utilize it. Additionally, we looked at how can we build families and engage communities to help our students to achieve. And so I want to thank the, the, our guest presenter, Mrs. Tamari Johnson-Williams, for her excellent presentations each week on the cell theory. I would also like to thank Royston Tibby, our analyzer, who helped us to dig a little bit deeper and to understand how we can make cell relevant to us in our classrooms as educators. And so we are in the month of Adaptable August. Adaptable indeed, because in this month, we'll be focusing on local school leadership and international school leadership. We'll be hearing from principals in that light as to how they have dealt with COVID, what were the changes that were made, and they will also be sharing with us tips that will propel us post-COVID and how we can make our schools contextualize to make it successful for our students. And so beginning this first series, this first week, we have with us Vice Principal of Penwood High School, my good friend, Mr. Omar Largi, who will be sharing with us insightful information as to how, as a school leader, he has changed his role and maintained his focus and what is it that he's sharing with us for post-COVID. Let's have him. Good day, colleague educators. It is indeed a pleasure joining with you today. It is my hope that you're taking care of your mental health during this time of crisis. It's my hope also that you're practicing the usual COVID-19 protocols, the wearing of masks, sanitizing, and social distancing. For today, I will be sharing with you some strategies that was used as an educational leader in steering my school during the pandemic, as well as tips that will be needed post COVID-19. Now, the pandemic caused the immediate shutdown of schools, but the business of education had to continue. So as schools were closed physically, the doors shuttered, schools transitioned to distance learning. We used the online platform where teaching and learning essentially occurred over the internet. With this, the strategies, techniques that teachers would use, the pedagogical skills would be totally different from those of the regular face-to-face -face classes. So if teachers' techniques are changing, obviously the educational leaders' techniques must change also in order for effective supervision to take place. So before I delve into the strategies that were employed during the COVID pandemic, let us have a look back at what school was pre-COVID. The first and foremost, ensuring that teachers are present and punctual for school. Secondly, and most importantly, lesson planning. And obviously after lesson planning, we have to ensure that the lesson plans are actually executed. So you talk about class visits. In addition to that, professional development of the teachers on a monthly basis, very important. And in terms of the students, Obviously, we must take into consideration motivation and celebration of success of the students. For all schools, I'm sure, those sessions during general devotion, when the principal, vice principal, and other staff members encourage, motivate, speak to the students, those are absolutely essential. So the pandemic caused educators at all levels to make changes to their practices. It was no longer integrating technology into the lesson, but actually using technology to facilitate the lesson. And as we have learned long time ago with our basic school, primary school, the heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but while their companions slept, they were toiling upwards to the night. So as educational leaders, we cannot wait and depend on the IT department to teach us and show us how these online platforms work. It is a must that we 
hold the bull by the horn and lead the thrust forward, whether computer literate or not, we as education leaders must know what is happening. So within my school, I first had to do the Intel training in terms of the VIL virtual instructional leadership course, which was very good because with this, I was in the know as to all the various platforms that could be used for the online teaching and learning. So as was mentioned earlier, the first thing was teacher accountability being present for school. So during COVID, the teachers would actually send a WhatsApp message present for work, right? In addition to that, at the end of each week, there would be a Google form which was created where the teacher would basically write a summary as to what transpired during the week of school activities. With regards to lesson plans, there will be no writing of lesson plans in the, the usual book. I tried to throw that out a long time ago. So lesson plans would be emailed and how the teachers would actually receive feedback is that via Google Docs now, the amendments would actually be done, any changes, any suggestions would be done and right away, the teacher would be able to see those changes. Now, <laughs> there will be no walking off blocks to view classes to see what's going on, to see if teachers are actually teaching and implementing what they actually wrote in their plans. However, instead of a classroom walkthrough, we devise a plan, classroom view through. So I would have collected all the codes for the various classes, or if there's Zoom, collect the Zoom ID for the various classes and do a five minute, 10 minute, even 15 minute view through to see what is actually taking place and also to ensure that the teacher is present as they would have earlier said that present for class. The learning management system that was used was so good in that while I am having my phone in hand, I could see instantly when a student sign in or upload an assignment, I would receive that notification. When a teacher signs into class or uploads an assignment to the students, instantly I would receive such a notification as well. So essentially, it felt like I had a camera in all classrooms, seeing what was happening, hearing what was happening, knowing what is happening. Pre-COVID, we would generally have planning sessions, staff briefings, the usual meetings. But with the online teaching and learning, we had to have a lot of Zoom meetings. Because with COVID, you know, the, the physical distancing can also impact us mentally and teachers may feel separated and distant from both administrators as well as the students. So we ensured that we kept in contact with each other very frequently. And you know that the COVID situation was extremely fluid. Weekly, there will be changes, so we have to meet the teachers often during the COVID crisis. <laughs> school can't be school without children being their regular selves. So you know, children will disrupt class, whether physical or otherwise, they will disrupt class. And some students will not do assignments. They're just being themselves. So we still had to maintain that level of structure and discipline while we were online. So there would be meeting with parents and students via Zoom, consultation. Five years, 10 years ago, other school leaders would chastise children for being on Facebook, Instagram, right? But during the COVID pandemic, we actually had to send children to Facebook and Instagram live stream because how else would we have our general devotions? In 2016, when I became vice principal, one of my first tasks was to craft a technology policy. Because for me, I couldn't understand why are we preparing the children for the future? And the future is technology, yet technology is not being integrated into the teaching and learning um, environment. With the technology policy that was crafted pre-COVID, one of the most critical part was the fact that students were able to take their devices to school. It was a challenge selling this to the senior teachers, but they eventually bought into the idea because you know that most schools were more worried about, okay, the children will be videoing certain things which will be out in the public, but I'm like, 
let's deal with the issue at hand, but the students must carry their devices to school. In addition to that, students were given access to the internet because just like how they would have their regular dictionary or in the language class they'll use the gleaner, there's apps for those. So we have to teach the students how to use the technology to make them smarter. Before COVID, there was a pilot actually for two classes to use the Schoolage platform. And with the Schoolage platform, the internal examinations were actually done online. And these students would go to the computer lab, log on and do their exam online. So with COVID, it was an easy transition for us to just spread this straight across the school as well. In addition to that, we use the WenWeb system so as I mentioned earlier, with regards to throwing out the, the lesson plan book, we also throw out the mark book because grades could be placed online, the Renweb system, an easy way to have our reports prepared. There will come a day when we will get rid of the mask permanently. Post-COVID, education will essentially have some elements of the COVID crisis and educational leaders I encourage you I implore you to read 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 the news is not enough to be up to date with all that is happening I implore you to read post COVID as well you have to set some standard operating procedures online is going nowhere you will have to integrate online with the regular face-to-face -face facilities. Communication will be absolutely vital and we must employ and continue to employ the use of social media. Most schools by now are having their Twitter angles, their Facebook accounts, their Instagram accounts because our stakeholders need instant, concise and factual information with what's going on in our schools. I believe if we gradually transition our internal exams to online, even 50% of them, we can save in terms of our printing resources. Also, if we should actually invest, ensure a part of our budget goes towards technology, those PTA, staff meetings, those um, graduations, prize giving ceremonies, there could be a hybrid so essentially, we'll be saving as well, because sometimes we want the parents to be there, but unfortunately, they just can't be there. So if we actually invest in technological devices as well, it will be good for us. And finally, collaborate. No man is an island, no man stands alone. And I believe the COVID crisis, even though it separated us physically, it brought us closer together in sharing ideas. My colleagues, it has been a rough period, but don't be daunted. As I leave you, I leave with you the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, just crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. Do have a blessed day. Vice Principal Largy, Indeed, you did an excellent job in sharing with us what you have done to ensure that Penwood High School remained Penwood High School even in the face of a pandemic. I also enjoyed the tips that you shared that as school leaders post-COVID, we need to stay in the know. We need to utilize a variety of strategies, a variety of medium, a variety of of, of standards that will help us as school leaders in our field to demonstrate excellence and to ensure that the teaching learning environment is one that reflects modern 21st century learning style and that will help our students to be successful. Educators, please like, share, comment, and give your feedback on this video and how it is that you also would have employed some strategies because we're all in a learning community. I look forward to 
hearing from you yes and i look also forward to you tuning in and viewing for our analysis thursday this week thank you so much enjoy your rest walk good and remember whatever you do you do it for the future and you do it to make yourself the reflective practitioner that you ought to be i am carla boswell lewis director for strategic educational consultancy services where my only mission is to empower you educators